Good evening, Your Worship. This item is for the Community Development Block Grant Public Hearing and Presentation. Fred Fox of Fred Fox Enterprises is here to do the presentation. We also had a meeting of the Citizens Advisory Task Force this week, and I'll be letting you know what that task force came up with. Go ahead, Fred. Okay. We're going to do a first public hearing and then a fair housing workshop, and both of those require a sign-in sheet from the audience. I'm going to start passing those around. You signed both of them? Those are two separate items. The uh, Community Art Block Ramp Program is fairly funded. The money comes from HUD. For larger cities and counties, i.e. Polk County, the money comes directly to them. They do an action plan. Uh, HUD blesses the plan and just how they spend the money they're going to get. For smaller cities and counties, uh, you, uh, there's a pot that goes to the state and used to go to the Department of Community Affairs. The state abolished the Department of Community Affairs, so now it goes to the Department of Economic Opportunity. And basically, it's the same individuals, they just moved them over to a different department uh, to do the competition. Uh, actually, Haines City has the option every three years of getting back under the county umbrella or staying out. Historically, you've, you've opted to compete at the state program because you've been more successful at it and you get quite a bit more money. The new cycle, basically, uh, applications are due the 22nd of this month. The, there are new community-wide need scores. Those have reset. You, in the, the old scores are based upon 2,000 census. The new scores are based upon a 2010 census. Uh, there's a new rule for this year for the first time. They've been trying for three years to put the rule in place. They finally got it in place this year. And in doing that, they, they're about nine months behind where they need to be with their cycles, and they'll probably catch that up between now and in the next three cycles. Um, we anticipate the cycle be the 22nd of this month, the cycle in the spring of next year, probably a cycle in the fall of next year, and then from there on we'll go back to fall, annual fall cycles, which is where they were historically before they tried to do the rule change. Um, there are four, still four categories that hasn't changed. You can apply for either a housing rehabilitation grant, a, a commercial revitalization grant. Housing rehabilitation is where you're dealing with low and moderate income households and you're either rehabbing or replacing their home. They must own and occupy the house. Um, and typically, you're in all these categories except for economic development, you're eligible to apply for $750,000. That's the maximum. There's no advantage for applying for less. Um, and typically for that amount of money, you're going to address a minimum of 11 households. Two of them would have to be extremely low income. Three additional ones would have to be very low income. Extremely low is 30% of median income. Um, low is 50% of median income, and low moderate is 80% um, of median income. So basically, if you chose to do a housing grant, at least two of the households would have to be extremely low income. Three more would have to be low income, and the remaining six would have to be uh, low moderate income. And anybody that made more than 80% of median income would not qualify for the program. Commercial revitalization, we've done a number of commercial revitalization grants over the years. Uh, the park across the street is a commercial revitalization grant. The streetscapes improvements in front of City Hall are, are commercial revitalization grant. And typically that streetscape improvements, it can be the acquisition of property and the construction of a parking lot. And it's usually in your downtown commercial areas within your CRA. And that's the second option. In the past, you could actually apply for a commercial and a housing or a commercial in a neighborhood. And if both were fundable, you selected on the front end which one you wanted. And they've done away with that. Under the new rule, you can only apply for one. So no matter which category now, you can only get maximum one category out of either the housing, the commercial revitalization, or the neighborhood revitalization. Neighborhood revitalization is basically public works projects. It's what we applied for last year. We're not successful. Um, basically, it's infrastructure. It, it can be a fire station, but no, more normally it's water lines, sewer lines, drainage, uh, road, road work, this type of thing. And so in those three categories, housing revitalization, commercial revitalization, and neighborhood revitalization, you apply for one if you're fortunate enough to get funded in the competition. You can't apply for any grants in those three categories until you finish the grant that you got funded for. Fourth category is a standalone category. It's economic development, and the city's done several of those as well. Uh, economic development is where you've got a business that either is here and wants to expand or a business that wants to come in 
And typically, you're putting an infrastructure with a grant fund. And that category used to have a cap of seven hundred and fifty thousand, and they've increased that cap now to a million five. However, for each thirty-five thousand, well, actually, just you say below thirty-five thousand dollars of grant funds being requested for each full-time equivalent new job the business is creating. That's not me. That's a, that's not always been a federal HUD requirement. But you can now go up to a million five without a waiver request. Um, the last couple of years, they've granted pretty much waivers across the board, and they're saying that with this increase, they're not going to approve any more waivers, but we'll see how that goes. Um, with that, again, you cannot go in for a speculative project. You have to have the business in the back pocket, and when you go in, they're committing to create the jobs, they're creating to build a building, um, whatever they're going to do to create permanent jobs. And it is permanent jobs. It's not construction jobs. Uh, in the handout, you've got a chart of when I talk about extremely low income and very low income, and then low moderate income, the numbers are unique for every county. The, the, the chart you have are Polk County's numbers to give you an idea of what those are based upon household size. The, some of the other changes in, with the new rule, your leverage is reduced from $125,000 for points down to $50,000. For communities that have a, popu have a low moderate income population of less than 1,250 people, they, they, they can get one point for every thousand dollars they put in, up to twenty-five thousand dollars for communities that have more than twelve hundred and fifty low moderate income people in the city. Is one of those that does. Uh, you get a point for every two thousand dollars, so you maximize your points at fifty thousand dollars. Where under whereas under the old rule, it took one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars of match to maximize your points. Um, also, one thing that stayed in place is there's 100 points in the competition for being shovel-ready. So basically, most communities that are getting funded are putting on the front end to plans and specs. You're paying for that out of your back pocket. If you're funded, it's not reimbursable. So to be competitive, you're looking at plans and specs on the front end and then a commitment of $50,000 on the back end if you're funded. Um, so the process is... You appointed your Citizens Advisory Task Force, and that's, there's another change there. Uh, they all, they've always had to be citizens of the city. They still do. But now 51% of them have to be low-moderate income citizens of the city, and that's new. Um, but you appointed your task force. They've met that requirement. They met as part of this presentation. We'll get into their recommendation to you. Uh, they've advertised and they've held their first meeting. We're advertising and holding the first public hearing this evening. We'll also hold the Fair Housing Workshop this evening. That's a change. It used to require two. Now they're down to one. However, if you're funded, you have to do a fair housing activity every quarter now. And that's been in place for about three or four years. And then at your next meeting, we're going to hold a second public hearing. We're actually going into the details of the project that you're going to select this evening. Uh, and the applications are actually due again June 22nd, which is two weeks from Monday. So uh, short timeline. That's the process. If you're ready to answer any questions on how the program works, anybody has. So, so tonight, are we are we collectively supposed to be deciding which of these four? Yeah, basically, you, you, your process from here would be to have actually held a public hearing, go out public input, and then from that, uh, take staff recommendation, take the CATS recommendation and then authorized development of an application in one of the categories if you choose to move forward. Under the economic development, again, I just want to make sure I understood you, is that you can go for the grant before you have an uh, existing or a no, you, business in mind, or do you have to have a business? No, you actually have, to have that business as a part of that application. They are committing to <coughs> specific job creation and to spend a specific amount on their facility, and that's a standalone category. You can actually get one of those a year, even if you have one of the other grants. No, I just didn't know if you could apply for it and then use that as a carrot to go out. To no, <laughs> no, 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 no speculative. Years ago, they used to be able to do speculative projects. If you had a developer that was committing to basically go out and find a business, but that's years ago. It hasn't been in place for a number of years. The uh, Citizens Advisory Task Force was presented with the project that we, we um, put in the grant last year, which is, is shovel ready. We have spent city dollars on the design of the gravity sewer project from Henson Avenue to Johnson Avenue through uh, uh, 22nd Street, Melbourne Avenue, 23rd and 24th Street. So those projects are shovel ready. 
that project was presented and was the number one project selected by the Citizen Advisory Task Force. What was it? What category did that? It is the neighborhood revitalization. There's also two other activities. One is the elimination of a lift station and converting the line to a gravity line for one of the apartment complexes in town. And then operating another lift station that this lift station would then pump into. Correct. Just grabbing that one there. If he chose to do the same one again, what's the possible? I mean, uh, did they just not like that project, so they kick it out? No, no, it's a competition. So and basically, system, what kind of drives us is community wide need scores. And again, they've reset now. The last time they reset was for the 2000 census. Typically, they reset about three years after the census. And they just reset. This will be the first cycle with the new 2010 community wide need scores. Uh, the project itself scored off okay, it, but when you look at all the other factors, uh, there's, there's basically you want to score at 250. But as you get funded for projects, for under the old rule, for every hundred thousand dollars a portion thereof, you lost five points. Under the new rule, for every twenty thousand dollars a portion thereof, you lose one point. So, that, and, and, and the theory being over that ten-year period, that spreads spreads the money around a number of communities. If your, if your score goes down, somebody else has a better shot of getting in the next time. Um, and your score, because we did have so many projects funded during that last 10-year cycle, I think it was down to 120 out of 250. Your, your original score was in the 130, 140 range. And your score this time is in that same range to start with. So, so the possibility of reintroducing the same project. And yeah, the project approved. itself was not a bad project. But it was I mean, the possibility of getting it approved. If you reintroduce it, it's still probably pretty just low. It, it, I mean, you, there's, there's other factors. This is a rural program. There's 20 points for being in a rural area or being a ready community. You qualified for ready under the 2000 census. A number of communities, including Hale and City, did not meet the criteria under the 2010 census. Um, one of the specific criteria that I'm talking about is that when you look at the census in the four highest categories of, of employment in the city, one of them had been in the agricultural area. And in the 2000 census, you met that. In the 2010 census, it's really far down the list. It's not even close to the top four. Um, and that's not just you. It's a, a bunch of communities in the state. Um, what the difference is from the census point of view, I have no idea. But we're seeing that in a lot of places. And that so that costs you 20 points that you've gotten previously. Um, everything else is pretty much, you know, you'll score pretty good on. But the, the, those are some areas that you won't score as high. But it's still, I mean, there's going to be three quick cycles. And, again, as, as communities get funded, they're not eligible to apply again. So we think it's good, the competition is going to get less over the next couple of cycles. And, get, and from that, you'll have a better chance of getting funded. And, and to give you an idea of our track record, the last cycle, they funded 12, 20 neighborhood projects. We wrote nine of them. They funded two commercial. We wrote one of them. They funded about six housing. We wrote one of those. And we wrote all five economic development projects that were funded this past cycle. These aren't matched grants. These are just outright dollars, right? There's not, there's not a required match. There's a points match for committing to up to $50,000 of local match if you're funded. Last year we uh, committed to, to match 125. Again, new rule over. That's the difference. It's you're still getting it's, it's 25 points. Last year it was one point for every five thousand dollars under the old rule. Under the new rule now it's one point for every two thousand dollars. If you get funded, you will spend more than fifty thousand of your money to complete the project. The, yeah, the project's bigger than seven hundred fifty thousand. But that's the committed match in the in the application. I will say that Mr. McLean was the uh, was on the ta uh, Citizens Advisory Task Force, and he has actually voted the chairman, and he is in the audience tonight. And Brandon Washington did a wonderful job putting that task force together. So, my recommendation is to go with the, the task force recommendation, and my recommendation is to go forward with the sewer or the neighborhood revitalization project, the Henson Avenue sewer project. The, the same project or the same. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, is that being asked in this public hearing? That's the first step, and then we'll do the next one. Fred, is that it? In this public hearing, once we get through with citizens' comments, right. you'll need a, a recommendation from y'all or, or direction just to develop, redevelop that application, and then at the next meeting, we'll present it in detail. Gotcha. 
me to open the public hearing. All right, at this time, we will open the public hearing. If anybody wants to come and talk to you about that, please step forward and give us your name, your name and address for the record. Oh, I'm sorry. Is it better? Seeing none, I close the public hearing. And now staff presents the project that they're recommending. You already did all that. I did all that. Mr. Mayor, I, I recommend or uh, I'd make a motion that we go with uh, the task force recommendation and my recommendation, which is to resubmit the same project as last year. Sorry. Any further discussion? Seeing none, gentlemen, we have a motion and a second to follow the recommendation of CATF and staff. All in those favor, vote aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. Motion carries. And we probably appoint them, but who, who's the task force? Uh, Mr. I don't have the list of all the names. I know Mrs. Brundage and Mrs. Harris were, were in attendance. I'll just, and just ask you what to who. I don't remember. I said Mr. Mr. McLean can probably tell us if we... Uh, the plane probably can't tell us. <laughs> it's okay. You can have a who. No, he knows you understand. Who the task force is. All right. But that's fine. I'm, I'm the, all in agreement. I'll get those. I just want to let you know. Okay, so we directed close the small cities. Did I open it up? Yeah. Fair housing workshop. We, have to, we need to have a fair housing workshop. Okay. That's number last. <laughs> okay. Basically, again, this is five points in the application process. For You get a total of ten, five for having passed a fair housing ordinance. And you have passed a fair housing ordinance in the past. And as the feds have added other protected categories, you've then passed updated ordinances to include those. So your ordinance pretty much matches the federal requirements for classes that are protected. What I want to talk about this evening is the Federal Fair Housing Act and how people can, uh, if they feel they have uh, been agreed, if uh, they were slotted that who they can how to contact the state, how to contact the feds. And I have extra copies of this if anybody would like it. Uh, so that they or someone they know could apply uh, and file a complaint and grievance uh, either at the state or, and or the federal level. Basically, the original Fair Housing Act was passed in 1968. It was updated in 1988 and then again in 1995, each time adding different additional classes. And currently, the Fair Housing Act prohibits discrimination due to someone's race, their color, their religion, their national origin, their sex, their familial status, which means if somebody has kids and it's not a senior's complex, you can't discriminate against them because they have children, and then the fact that someone is disabled. Um, it, it is for people to deal with more than three units. If somebody just has three units and they run out or less, this would not apply to them. They are exempt. It's for people actually in the real estate profession, either selling real estate, residential real estate, single-family residential real estate, or mortgage brokers providing mortgage financing or apartment complex managers uh, renting units to, uh, to people. And basically, the if someone feels they have been aggrieved, somebody is basically uh, discriminated against them, there, this packet has had to fill out a complaint. It has to be a written complaint. At both the, and you can do it at the state and or the federal level. The packet also has the Southeast Regional Office of uh, HUD, where you can write and provide and send your complaint to at the federal level. It also goes into what happens when you file a complaint and how it's investigated. There's also the Florida Commission on Human Re Relations and, and their toll-free number on their website and, and a regular number. And, you can call them and file a complaint with them as well. So, that, and all that's in here. And again, I'm not going to go into it in a whole bunch of detail, but these packets are available if somebody would like one. I've got them with me. Um, everybody at the board has one. So, if, if somebody didn't can, can get one tonight or somebody came in, uh, we, the clerk would have one because she's got one to work from. And we can, so we can send them out as emails if anybody would like them. 
And that basically is, for this evening, the Fair Housing Workshop. And then again, it was based upon the federal and state fair housing regulations. And next time I come up, I'll do yours again. But we sort of shifted off, and so we've done yours in the past a number of times. So you're saying we don't need to do anything else? No, yeah, it's just informational. Right. Any questions at all? Thank you very much. All right.